Oracle Payables Advanced. Hello and welcome back. As you would recall, in the Payables for Beginners course, we have learned all about setting up suppliers, invoices and payments. We then understood each of the business flows associated with them. This course basically covers the advanced topics for Payables such as Payables integration to other modules like fixed assets, projects and Oracle Internet expenses. We'll first start with learning about the integration of Payables with fixed assets. So before we go into that, let's understand why there is a functionality in Oracle for assets. Basically, large organization, what they do is just like any other goods or services, assets are purchased from suppliers, but then after it's been purchased, to maintain those assets until their life cycle, Oracle has given a module called as fixed assets. And that's where the fixed assets module helps organization to capitalize those assets, to bring them in service, to depreciate those assets until the asset life cycle, or reclassify those assets and once the asset life cycle gets over, simply to retire those assets. And of course, while doing all these transactions, fixed assets generates accounting entries, so fixed assets module integrates very seamlessly with sub-ledger accounting and general ledger module. So Oracle can simply transfer those accounting entries from fixed assets to these modules and in GL these accounting can be posted. So that was at a high level why fixed asset module is really required and where it helps in Oracle applications. As far as integration to Payables are concerned, Payables comes in a way of paying for the assets that's been acquired by the suppliers. So once those assets have been acquired, Payables just acts like intermediary. So it, it helps to transfer that information for which the payments have been made for assets to fixed assets module, as simple as that. Now, as far as payables are concerned, there are a number of flows in relation to fixed assets. So what I've done out here, I've summarized those flows over here. To start with, I've categorized into three types. The first type is wherein you have a purchase order with an item SKU specifically defined in Oracle applications. So in that case, a purchase order is raised with item SKU and then it is um, the, the goods will be supplied by the supplier, it's received into the warehousing or it's received into the receiving and then of course supplier will send you the invoice and that invoice is paid. So although it sounds very simple, but it's a complex process. It involves a number of modules in Oracle applications, which includes inventory, purchasing, account payables, general ledger, sub-ledger accounting, and fixed assets modules. So that was the first type of flow, wherein you have an item SQ. All right. Now there is a similar flow that is there. It's pretty much similar to what I described above. But the difference is that Payables now integrates with projects. So, so in this case, if the assets will be capitalized as a part of the projects and only then they will be transferred to fixed assets. So in this case, what happens is the purchase order is a part of a project and when the invoices are paid, the invoice expenses gets rolled over at the project level so the expensive can can be seen and then assets are created in projects they are brought in service in projects 
the capitalized in projects but as far as the depreciation and asset life cycle is concerned project interfaces them to fix assets module that's where these rest of the asset maintenance happens and integration with general ledger happens directly with fixed assets and GL module so that's another flow so addition in that flow is that the project accounting module comes into play then comes type 2 type 2 is a flow wherein you have a purchase order but you don't have an item SKU so all you go about is going by an item description Oracle doesn't restrict users to acquire assets uh, whether there is an item or there is no item defined in Oracle so that's an advantage so we will see that flow it's pretty much similar flow but just that you don't have an item SKU and you're simply going by description alright then the third type of flow is wherein you don't have a purchase order at all for instance this could be circumstances wherein an asset has been acquired without a purchase order <clears throat> or something outside the system and then the supplier has sent you the invoices and based on those invoices you transfer the assets to either fixed assets module or to projects module Oracle provides both the integration so that's the third type of flow with an integration between payables and assets so we'll start with the first flow wherein I will describe you what are the elements and the process steps involved in payables to assets wherein you've got a purchase order with item SKU. <coughs> 